this is a painting of Raja Ravi Verma painted by his son Rama Verma, where Rama Verma has shown Ravi Verma with the tools of his trade, uh, the palette on which he used to mix his colors, brushes, the palette knife and so on. But the most important thing there is the bottle of varnish. During the 17th, 18th, 19th century in Europe, all realistic paintings, oil on canvas paintings, were given a coat of varnish. This was to add to the intensity and the sheen of these paintings. Varnish was also equally important for Ravi Verma because he was an academic painter. Quite often there are letters one has come across where he's writing to patrons and saying that I, the painting I made for you um, six months ago, I need to come along and give it a varnish because now the painting is dry, that kind of thing. So what painters did not know at this time was the, the effect that varnish had on paintings over time. It could happen after 40 years or 50 years or 100 years, but paintings that were covered by varnish, they looked very good when it was done. Uh, gradually, the varnish changed color. It, um, it became pale yellow and brown and not only did the original color, the original paint get hidden, it also hid details. And through the details that got hidden, aspects of the story, nuances of the story that could be conveyed were also hidden. Actually, our task is sometimes very exciting because you suddenly come across uh, something which is unexpected and it's always a thrill to, uh, to see that and to actually come to the, to the bottom of it or let's say to the truth of a painting. Hanuman discourse is yet another example of uh, varnish hiding some secrets. So when we were cleaning it and we had to clean through various layers, there was dirt, there was varnish, there was even wax. And that's when we discovered uh, the throne that had been painted over and some arches on the background. This painting, Ravi Verma, I think had a problem with situating the, the characters and the throne. He tried to do it in one way. The throne was frontal and there were architectural elements at the back. Uh, he realized he wasn't able to accommodate all the key uh, figures and all that extra thing. So he uh, covered it, painted over it and shifted uh, the, the throne to an angle and removed, made the, made the background flat. But what is remarkable is that for a very small format painting, this reveals and says so much. Hanuman is reading, Ram is interpreting, he's sitting like, like, a, like a guru, he's a teacher, and Sita and Lakshmana are leaning forward to hear what he's saying with full concentration. It's a beautiful painting. If his paintings need restoration, they need it because they are dirty, because the varnish is too heavy, or because they have been mistreated. Because at that time, Swadeshi meant denouncing anything which was English. So it was an anti-colonial movement. Uh, and in that, of course, was thrown in oil paints because they were manufactured abroad. And he was the person who was using oil paints. So he was unpopular. This is a respectably married Naya lady, slightly intellectual. Again, we are pointing out to the fact that here is literacy. Women are literate. There was the beginning of cracks. When you see the arm, the detail of the arm, there were cracks that were developing. This was just the start. So we had to, after removing the varnish, which of course was everywhere, we had to then consolidate the cracks so that 
even when they were becoming cracks, we would stop it from happening. So now the painting is fine. Once you understand the technique, the way the painting has been made, the materials that have been used, the medium it is painted on, once you understand that, you can be restoring. It's very difficult when people say, how long will you take? I, I, I can't uh, answer that until you haven't started work on it. You don't know how it's going to respond to the care you're giving it. You know, paintings are in a way like human beings. Some are easy to deal with and some are damn tough. Art and science come together and then you are trained into being a conservator. You have to understand the artist. How will he paint? What is the logic of his mind? How did he think? Would he do this or would he not do this? Once you understand that, you can be restoring. This is a completely different uh, science. It's got nothing to do with painting. You cannot say, uh, well, I, I think uh, I can make the leaves look a little brighter. They're rather dull. You can't use your judgment or opinion and work on, on, on the painting. You can't do that. The painting that is in front of you is sacrosanct. You cannot fiddle with it. Visualize a palace. Uh, there are many paintings hanging and some paintings uh, develop cracks and uh, all kinds of horrible things, a hole or whatever. So then what would uh, the manager or the overseer, whoever is looking after those paintings do? He'll call the, the local artist who'll arrive with his paintbrush and his colors and um, he, he'll hide all the cracks and the holes with that. Uh, so many paintings do arrive with uh, a great deal of overpaint because there was a time when this is the only way people knew how to do things. This is um, Yashoda, absolutely beautiful. So here is that troublesome varnish again, giving us a different kind of a reaction. The varnish turned slightly white because of the humidity. And Yashoda's face, one side, you. The, the, the eye is whitish, Krishna is whitish, uh, her clothes, Yashoda's clothes always became a very, 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 very pale blue as a result of this whitish uh, quality. There were small, tiny holes in, in this painting and Ravi Varma has in his own handwriting written on the reverse side the title of the painting and his signature and everything. Unfortunately, because of these small holes, it had cut into his own handwriting. So we had to uh, treat the painting very carefully that uh, we would show the reverse, show his handwriting and uh, yet protect it from the back. This painting is Aja's Lament. That's one name one title. The other one is The Fatal Garland. Aja is on the terrace with his wife and they're having a nice time when Indra passes overhead wearing his garland. Indra's garland had a special quality to it that if it fell on anyone that person immediately died. Unfortunately it fell on Aja's wife Indumati and she died at the moment of their greatest pleasure. That when the painting was being cleaned, the, the part of the, the left side where the painting has, the varnish has been removed, you see his eyes are red and it's full of unshed tears. So it's a terrible, tragic moment for Aja that is revealed. Otherwise, because of the varnish, such a tragic moment wasn't visible. Now Rani Kavu Thampuran, her varnish was very, very dark. It was a shock actually, literally, 
that when I removed a little bit on her face to see the contrast between what her face was, the way Ravi Varma had painted it and how dark the varnish had become. What Ravi Varma did for his patrons, that uh, he, he made them who they were, of course, but uh, he had a way of adding to the gloss, their, their looks. And it's apparent that Ravi Varma has based this on the photograph of Rani Ikavu Thampuran, which is in circulation. Whereas he has made her face in a flattering way, what he has left are the varicose veins on her hands. This is the beautiful Bombay singer. When it arrived, it was slightly disastrous. It was covered with a deep yellow coat of varnish. A large portion of the middle had been eaten away by a squirrel. So it takes quite a bit of time uh, to make it uh, like an invisible procedure. Uh, the drama really emerged uh, when we cleaned the painting. So the, you see the face, it's beautiful, the, the, the soft tints of the face. Uh, and what also comes out is the gossamer feel of the chanderi sari, the strings of the veena, which were completely not visible. So these are the subtle things that come out. This is Martin Tondeman of Pudukote, who was the crown prince destined to be the Maharaja. He had earlier made uh, a figurine, a Chinese figurine on this side. He had painted it here. Now I'm just speculating, but it's possibly what happened. When he finished making it, he realized that it was almost like a straight line between the figurine, which ends here, and the tip of this feather. So he uh, used this curtain, he extended it and he covered the figurine and he painted this Evangelina statue below so that the asymmetry sets a rhythm over a century later. This paint naturally dries. And when oil paint dries, one of the things that happens to it is it becomes transparent. So through the transparency, this figurine, Chinese figurine, uh, came through and I noticed it accidentally when I saw it in the right kind of light. So we took it for an x-ray. When we x-rayed this, there is no hesitation at all in what is underneath and what is on top. You can go on and on. and That's the kind of grime that accumulates on a painting. And of course, it's slightly dangerous if too much grime is allowed because uh, dust attracts fungus. So it can start a whole new uh, series of complications on a painting. I mean, there's an ethics in living life. Uh, and certainly, uh, conservation carries its own uh, many, many, many rules of ethics, definitely. You are only to deal with what is the troubled area, not the rest. And you have to be invisible. Whatever you have used, that it should be in a position to be removed easily. And you have to completely respect the original work, whatever. Your work is only with where the damage is. And you sort that out and you move away quietly. You don't belong. <laughs>